Welcome back. In the last clip we extended the simulated area with a grid for the ocean displacement. Just jump into our guided ocean layer initial to see the issue and also to set up the workflow I mentioned so that we can tweak the look of our ocean in the background separately. So here you can see now our spectrum for the simulated area with all the details. Let's just copy these two nodes here, the grid preview and the ocean preview. Copy them and paste them here because now we are going to set up a larger preview area so we can judge the displacement back here. Just break the connection here, put 1500, 1500 and minus 500, minus 500. Okay, so also let's increase the rows and columns a bit to see a bit more detail. Okay. So now we have a good preview how the ocean will also look with the displacement and now you can spot the issues here. We have a pattern here, we have a pattern here and this is really not necessary because with all the new ocean tools it's pretty easy to avoid this pattern. But as mentioned we want to have the freedom to tweak the ocean spectrum here in the foreground for our simulation purpose as we did because it has exactly the waves we want. But now we're going to isolate the foreground from the background so we can tweak the settings back here separately. As you can see here on the right I already dropped down some nodes because basically we are using the same workflow as in the first module where we set up the large scale ocean. To avoid showing here repetitive things I already set up these nodes. You can just grab them from the 0503 underscore start hip and copy them to use scene. And just to give you a short overview, we have this grid as in the first module, scattering points onto this grid here. Then there's one important thing with the delete node there. We are deleting the points that are near our simulation area. So we can make sure that we just scatter waves back there and not in our simulation area. Then we split them up to have two different spectrums here. I already tweaked the spectrum data just like in the first module, adjusted the grid size and so on to roughly match with our simulated area but with more variants. Okay, let's switch back to our ocean preview and let's just copy this merged spectra node here. Let's call this merged spectra rendering. Okay, get a bit more space and let's connect it to take a look. At the moment nothing changes but if we connect these two nodes here to our merged spectra rendering you will see that now in the background we have more variants. Also here the pattern is gone so that's working exactly like we want. But there's one more issue. At the moment it's just adding these two spectrums here on top. So we still have our main spectrum everywhere. So to avoid this we have several options. We could use the mask input here and create a big volume mask. But the problem with such a big mask is that the calculation of the spectrum and the particle fluid mask takes quite some time. So a better option here is to use the wave instancing feature. So let's copy our main spectrum so we can do some tweaks to it. Just connect this here. Okay. And now the idea is to use here the wave instancing point feature but just with one point which is here in the center. So basically we have one point instance which creates the spectrum but just in this area and we can fade it out. So let's do this, drop down an add node here just to create this one point. Tick on point zero and it's already centered. Okay, connect it here to the first input. And now you can see there's already a change because now it's using the wave instancing feature. And let's check wave instancing tab. The radius is 20 at the moment. That's just this little patch here. So we want to have it in the whole simulation area and then fade it out to the background. So let's increase it to 160 here. Make sure there's no variance. Okay, because we still want to have our original spectrum. So the radius is fine now, let's disable the rotation, also the offset and increase the amplitude to 1 to have the original values there. Okay, that already looks much better, let's zoom out a bit. As you can see it's in this area, to better visualize it for the moment, let's just connect here it directly to the spectrum and now you can see that we have the effect we want. We have our spectrum but just around the simulation area. 
Also let's decrease the roll off here a bit to two so it fades in and fades out smoother. Okay, back to our render cam. As you can see, it's just here in the simulated area. Let's reconnect here it to our merge spectral rendering. And now you can see that we get a nice variance in our ocean and there's no repetitive pattern. Okay, very nice. But before we can write out our mask and the spectrum itself, we're going to do some tweaks to our original simulation spectrum just to increase the detail. Here on top is the resolution exponent. Let's increase it to 10 to get more detail in the displacement. But at some point this detail also introduces noise which is not looking so nice. So I figured out in my rendering R&D that we should remap the amplitude here. That basically means that we can lower the amplitude in a specific resolution range of our spectrum. So let's tick it on. Say here 9. And now we will modify this amplitude ramp here to decrease the amplitude in a specific area of the spectrum. Okay, make sure the first point here, let's get the parameter values here. Let's make sure that the first point is at position 0 0.25. Introduce one more point here. Let's put this value here at 0 0.34. And also let's set the value itself to 8.2. Okay, the final value here is fine, but we will introduce one more value around here. Let's make sure it has a position of 0 0.564 and a value of 0 0.76. Okay, this ramp will make sure that we don't get too much noisy detail in there. And one more thing we're going to introduce here on our spectrum on the mask tab is the noise. To break up this a bit uniform spectrum even more, add the noise. And now we will set the values so that our simulation area directly around the boat is not influenced too much. Let's put a 6 here and an 18 here to have the size a bit non-uniform and decrease the roughness to 0 0.3. We will set the direction accordingly to our spectrum which has a 180 degree wave direction. Let's lower the speed and increase the pulse length so that the noise moves really slow. And let's set the offset here as I mentioned so that the simulated area is not influenced too much. Also, let's decrease the influence in general of the noise so we always keep a good amount of our spectrum. Okay, that's looking good. You can see that we introduce calmer areas around here and here, which will look pretty nice in the rendering. Okay, that's it basically. We have set up a workflow so that you can tweak the foreground, the simulated area and the background separately to be more flexible. And now what we need to do is to write out our spectrum and also the mask. So let's jump back up here into our guided ocean layer fluid extended where we have the mask and also the cache nodes. So we don't have to forget to relink now the merge spectra to the merge spectra rendering otherwise it will grab the old one. Hit the accept button and you can see that it already changed. So now let's go down here. We have the bake spectra and the bake spectra mask. Let's modify our pass here as always. Just $OS in a folder and $OS in the file name again. Okay. Copy this here, paste it here, but make sure that you have the $F in here because we need to write out the mask for every frame. Here for the spectrum, we just need one file, but for the mask, we need a file for every frame because the fluid is constantly changing. So let's write out the spectrum here. Just say save to disk should be pretty fast and also on a bake mask file cache node let's say save to disk this will take quite some time because it has to load every frame the flip cache here so let's start this and then we see us in the next clip where we will start tweaking the ocean shader see you there